in this devotional, I'm going to share with you three thoughts from Proverbs 16, verses 1 through 3, and I'll answer the question, how do our plans relate to God? Proverbs 16, verses 1 through 3 says, The plans of the heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of a man are pure in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the Spirit. Commit your work to the Lord, and your plans will be established. One of the big challenges with the text of Scripture is this. The text of Scripture seems to present God as having all-encompassing control over everything within creation. And at the same time, it depicts man as having some sort of say over what's going on in the world. And it's been one of the great challenges within Christianity to reconcile these two different ideas. Where does the sovereignty of God stop and the free will of man begin? Well. I don't think that the answer is cut and dried or very easy, but I do know this, that it's very clear that the sovereignty of God is all-encompassing. And it's also very clear that we think, we perceive our existence as being entirely controlled by ourselves. So we need to figure out how this works because we make plans and God establishes our steps. So here are three thoughts from Proverbs chapter 16, verses 1 through 3, answering the question, how do our plans relate to God? Thought number one, sovereignty. You need to recognize that God is sovereign over all creation. This is well established. And understanding the distinction between God and man is one of the things that the text of Scripture puts before you continually. God exists prior to anything else. In the beginning, what? God made the heavens and the earth, presupposing his existence and his ultimate control over everything that he is creating. That idea pervades the entire text. So God's sovereignty is assumed from the very beginning to the very end. The idea of prophecy means that the Lord works out precisely what he means to do in the world. Otherwise, how could prophecy possibly happen? So we need to recognize first and foremost, regardless of our perception of our existence, that God has told us that he is sovereign over all things. That is our beginning point. Thought number two, judgment. The plans of man are pure in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the spirit. The plans that we have, the things that we intend to do as creatures, we really intend to do them. We really make our plans and we really believe that we're going to bring them about. And we oftentimes think that this is all a product of our own creativity, our own will, our own power. What we need to realize though is that while that is our experience of things, that the Lord might possibly have a different experience of all of those things. So while we make our plans and our plans seem right in our own eyes, the Lord weighs the Spirit meaning that the Lord is judging those plans. The Lord is decreeing whether or not these plans that we have made are going to come about or if they will fail. And he can do that because, after all, he is the creator and we are the creation. That distinctive there, it's pretty important. The creator-creation distinctive. It means that God can judge the thoughts and ways and plans of man and do so perfectly and decree whether or not these things that we are planning are going to come about. What will really cook your noodle is when you realize that the Lord is also decreeing your planning. That will really give you a good time to sit back and question everything you thought about yourself. Thought number three. Aim high. When we commit our work to the Lord, the Lord establishes our plans. And the reason for that is not because we are teaming up together or some sort of thing like that. It's because we have decided that the things that we're doing are a form of our worship. And the Lord blesses our faithful worship of Him. So if we are looking to do the things that are ultimately pleasing to God, 
and we are endeavoring to make sure that our motivations are correct and our desire is to honor him in all the different things that we do, then he can establish and work out our plans being fulfilled. What we often do is we often think that aiming high means that I need to be the most successful at this or that or the other thing. But really what aiming high means is that we commit all the things that we do to honoring God. We recognize that everything we do can be a form of informal worship before God. That even something as menial as cutting the grass or washing the dishes can be a way of honoring God. And as we do so, and as we see a form of worship in the everyday and the mundane, then the Lord will honor those most simple of things. We aim high and recognize that ultimately it is the Lord who establishes our success or our failure. And he does so not in accordance with the amount of effort that we put into it or the amount of faithfulness that we happen to have, but in accordance with what is going to ultimately bring him the most glory in the world. When we recognize that, when we start to see that our purpose is always subservient to that of God, acknowledging his sovereignty and judgment over all things, then we start to really realize our place in this world. And doing so helps us to have increasing amounts of joy in all things. These three thoughts come from the assigned reading of Proverbs chapter 16. If you'd like to read through the Bible with me, you can do so by subscribing to this channel, by clicking on the link in the description, or by joining the Facebook group Through the Bible, where we are reading the text of Scripture together.